Hey there, this is Kyle Keogh, and I want to do the sixth video in this series that I'm working on about an introduction to uh, programming for powerlifting. I don't know how many of these I'm going to end up doing, but I'm just going to keep doing them until I've exhausted all of my subjects. And the subject for this video is going to be inductive versus deductive reasoning and how we use these to make decisions on our programming. So I'll first start by giving you a definition of inductive and deductive reasoning, and I'll talk about how they apply to the decisions that you make when you decide on your own programming. So I'll start with inductive reasoning. And inductive reasoning refers to the act of locating a particular example within a particular population. So uh, using powerlifting as an example, it would be looking at a particular lifter or a particular movement or just one piece of data in general and extrapolating out of that one piece of data a general rule for a large population. And so you see a particular lifter and he trains using a particular style and you ask this lifter, hey, what do you do for your training? And he says, well, here's my training program you take that one piece of information from that one person who presumably has uh, better lifts than you and is stronger than you and you apply it to yourself and one of three things happens either it works it doesn't work or you stay about the same deductive reasoning works in inverse and so with deductive reasoning what happens is uh, we take a general rule which is surveyed from a large population and so we take the aggregate experiences of a large amount of data. This can be looking at how uh, a large population of lifters train. This can be looking at uh, what commonly used uh, fixes for a particular weakness are being employed. And then applying that general rule, which is derived from again, a collection or an aggregate of data, applying it to an individual person. So to give you an example of how this would work, let's say we're a beginning lifter and we ask, hey, what do, uh, we ask ourselves, hey, what do beginning lifters do when they start training? So we go online and we Google uh, beginning strength training. And then you see the words starting strength appear over and over and over again. Uh, everywhere you look, you see on, on Google more examples of people who are running this program called Starting Strength. And so you think to yourself, well, a lot of people do this, so I'll do this as well. That's an example of deductive reasoning. It follows the premise that if it works for a large population of people, then it'll work for me. Now, these two are pretty regularly employed, and I'm sure that you can think of your own examples as to how inductive and deductive reasoning work best in powerlifting. So the subject of this video is what form of reasoning should you use for your individual training needs? And the simple answer is that there is no simple answer and that for the most part straddling a line between inductive and deductive reasoning is going to be the best approach for most everybody. So I guess in this video series, I don't really have any simple answers to everything. It seems like every answer is it depends, or every answer is take two poles of an argument and find the middle ground, and that's kind of where you want to be. And that's the truth here as well. So if you're looking to make a decision for yourself, don't rely on just what one person says about uh, you know what they do for their training. And so if you have, I'll just give you an example. If you have you know, weak hamstrings, or you can't lock out your deadlift, or you can't lock out your bench press, or I don't know what it is, but you've got this one particular issue, don't go asking somebody who's in a different situation from you, hey, what did you do to improve your lockout? And people do this a lot. Or what did you do to improve your, you know, your, your hamstring strength, or whatever the situation is. Don't go asking one person who has a lift that, that you, you know, that is better than yours, and then say, well, it works for them, so let me apply it to myself. Uh, there is a chance 
and it's a small chance, but there's a chance that they're going to supply you with exactly the correct information for you, and they'll probably have gotten lucky if they did this because diagnosing problems and training and offering solutions is really hard. And if it wasn't really hard, I'll tell you exactly what would have happened by now. There would have been one answer, and somebody would have written an ebook and made a lot of money on it, and the title of that ebook would have been The Best Way to Train, and everybody would have looked at that ebook and bought it, um, and, uh, and train that way, and nobody would use any alternative training methods because they would have the best ebook with the best method. So diagnosing an issue and training, it's really hard, and a lot of smart people will give you a lot of different answers on what a particular weakness could be, could be due to. So if, through, if you rely on inductive reasoning, you're only getting one answer, which has a very small chance of being successful and a very large chance of being unsuccessful. Now, if it's successful, it's probably going to be very successful. So somebody might have the secret for you. I mean, and it does happen. So-and-so might have the secret for you, and you hear these stories of somebody was suggested this one exercise, and they did it, and their deadlift went up 50 pounds. I mean, you figured it right out. But there's a very small percentage chance of that happening. Whereas if you use deductive reasoning, you take a general rule and you apply it, and you try to apply it to yourself, uh, you have a much higher chance of being successful. But if you are successful, you're probably not going to be successful to the same extent as if you ask that one person that one piece of advice and they give you the one quote unquote secret that answers your problem. So that's the paradox. And the way in which we get around that paradox, at least as best as possible, is we use some combination of inductive and deductive reasoning. So we remember what the general things, the general principles are that work for the largest percentage of people. While we're remembering that, we also look for other people who are at least in the same training position as we are, share a lot of things in common with us, or maybe slightly ahead of us in where we want to be. And this can be, um, this can be defined in terms of people who have a lot in common with us. This can be defined in a number of different ways. It can be somebody at the same weight as you. It can be somebody with the same leverages. It can be somebody with the same technique. It can be somebody with the same weaknesses. It can be somebody, uh, I mean, there are lots of ways in which you can define this, but you try and find somebody who's similar to you or somebodies who are similar to you. You draw from inductive reasoning and that's what I've been doing with my deadlift. I've been working with one person. I asked him, hey, what is, uh, you know, what do you do for your deadlift? Because I saw that uh, he had a style that I thought might be able to assist me. I was able to make that conclusion from deductive reasoning. So I looked at what I was doing versus what a large percentage of the population were doing. And I just felt like there was, you know, a, there was a disagreement there in what I was doing versus what a lot of people were doing. And so I felt like I was training at an extreme in terms of some of the variables that I was using. I felt like if I dialed some of those back, it might be helpful. He had a training program that I thought might be useful to me. So I used deductive reasoning to allow for inductive reasoning. And the inductive reasoning was going up to him and saying, hey, can you show me your program? I'm going to try using it. Made those changes. It wasn't a dramatic change to what I was doing before. So the results had been made measurable by not going from, I know I'm deadlifting twice a week as opposed to once a week, but I had always been doing, you know, more deadlifting, I would say, than, than most people. And uh, so deductive reasoning allowed for inductive reasoning, and I used the two together, and it worked pretty successfully. But my point of this is you don't want to be somebody who relies purely on deductive reasoning or purely on inductive reasoning. People who rely purely on inductive reasoning end up, for the most part, getting nowhere because they try a lot of weird little things from a lot of single sources and 95% of the time they don't work and then 5% of the time they do, and when they work, they work really well, but then they go right back to being stuck for a span of a few more years and just seeking out the best lifters and asking them for advice and uh, trying things and not having them work. But you also don't want to be a slave to deductive reasoning because uh, the general rules that work for most people 
um, they will get you to uh, an average to above average level. But if you're looking to be excellent, or if you're looking to be world class, then you do need a certain amount of feedback from the best lifters who are in a similar training situation as you in order to learn how they train in a way that is outside of the scope of like the you know the general training practices so what are they doing to an extreme in other words you know and uh, there are extreme training practices that you can learn from and you can draw from for me one of the ones that I picked up on over the last couple of years was just introducing more volume into my training um, generally speaking I, uh, I think I followed a lot of uh, pretty normal training practices, but I looked at a lot of the best lightweights and I just realized that, you know, there are some select examples of people who train higher volume than me and I think are more successful than me. And I think that part of the reason why is because there's a pretty direct correlation between lightweight performance and training volume. And so it was something that I, I addressed in my training and it's something that I did because I saw it in a few select examples. Um, so my point here in this video is don't rely on one, don't rely on the other, but be mindful of using both when you're making decisions related to your training. That's it. That's all I've got for this one. I'll be doing more of these very soon. I'm going to post this one up, and uh, I will be doing more of these soon. I don't know exactly what the subjects will be, but keep a, keep a lookout for the series.